Okay, so to add your base to KDP Wizard, what you're going to do is go over to Help, API Documentation, and just like in Merch Wizard, you're going to get a button at the top to add that base to the appropriate wizard. So I'm going to add base to KDP Wizard, and it'll be there in our options now. Okay, so now that we have our own copy of the Airtable base, and we've added it to KDP Wizard, we're going to want to push up some products to it. So the way we do this is to go to our bookshelf and uh, you'll see that we've got what we're terming the wizard dash up here. So we'll run through that quickly. Uh, so it has got your stuff at the top here, what we call the quick switcher, where you can change the active base that you're pushing and pulling from. So where you're, you're reading and searching information and where you're pushing your products to. Uh, we've got this create functionality like we have in Merch Wizard where you can create X number of new products. In this case, we're saying new paperbacks, but equally we could say we want to create some Kindle ebooks as well, and that will push those, uh, create the uh, tabs for us that are required to do that. Right, so let's get rid of those and yeah, so with the rest of that, if we have a quick look through here, we've got a knowledge base, the KDP website, a link to open air table, a link to the KDP wizard group, a report bug will open up a ticket, uh, or will allow you to submit a ticket to our fresh desk help desk, and we'll get to those as soon as we can. If you have an amazing idea or want to give some feedback, then uh, by all means do that and put that in the Facebook group. Okay, and then yeah, let's get on to pushing our listings up. So we can either push our listings individually, one at a time, uh, using the buttons next to them. So you'll see a red button here that will eventually turn to a mint green when it's already up there, and it will be called Update Airtable instead of Add to Airtable. So if I show you what happens when we click Add to Airtable, let's get rid of that. So. What it does, it opens up your uh, the details page for that particular product, scrapes the information, moves on to the content page, scrapes the information, moves on to the pricing page, scrapes the information, and closes it down. Now, if your product is only in draft, it's only going to scrape the details page, or it won't make it all the way to the, the pricing page uh, before closing down, so uh, don't panic about that. Right, uh, so we can push one at a time like that. Eventually, obviously, we will be adding it so it will open up each of the product pages as well for the different marketplaces to scrape the BSR, the reviews, and all that sort of good stuff as well. Okay, uh, in addition to that, what you can do is you can do a kind of bulk push. So that's going to push everything that's on this page, um, regardless of whether it's already been pushed or not. Uh, if it has already been pushed, it doesn't duplicate it, it just updates that particular record. So let's have a look at what that looks like. So at the moment, this is basically opening them up one at a, one at a time, which is uh, it's a more reliable way for us to get the information up into the base. Uh, let's have a look at the base now. So this is the one that we've already pushed up. You can see these other guys are still ticking away in the background. Um, we are doing them kind of sequentially because they share some of the attributes between the books. So you could have books with the same authors, same contributors, and uh, we just want to avoid conflicts where it's creating the same author multiple times. So you'll see it's pushing these listings up, and I think they'll be tend to push up altogether. So we'll come back in a, a few seconds and pick it up when it's finished. Okay, so we can see now it's pushed all the 10 records up to this base, so we've got all 10 products in there. Let's have a quick look through the base. Obviously, you can have a look at that at your leisure, but essentially it's copying up all the attributes that we've got on the different pages in your KDP control panel and pushing them up to here. So um, the products table is pretty self-explanatory. There's one row in here for each row on your bookshelf. And we're capturing all the text fields, the author, the contributors, and the keywords that have been used and entered for that particular listing. 
uh, the categories, the ISBNs, and a whole heap of other things. Now, what we're also doing is creating a record in the covers table and the interiors table for your uh, product here. So if we go to covers now, what we'll see is that we've got six covers uh, that have been used. Obviously, some of the remaining four are just in draft status at the moment, so they don't have covers or interiors as yet. But what you'll see here is that we're grabbing the file name, which is what you would have originally uploaded it to KDP as, uh, the trim size and page count and uh, all that good stuff. And what you can do is you can then associate your actual files, your actual covers with the, uh, the cover record in here. So, so if I bring across my covers folder here, then what I can do is I can associate that with the appropriate cover in here. It's going to upload it as an attachment, which we'll be able to use later on. So what else have we got? We've got number 12. We'll just do a few of these and number 10 at the bottom and number 10 at the bottom okay and then when we look at interiors we'll see it's similar to covers in that we're able to scrape the file name that you originally uploaded uh, to KDP and be able to associate therefore the products that use that interior and link them up uh, from the products table to here and again, you can upload your interior files as attachments to this interior attachments field. So if I just grab this one, so seven times 10 planner, no bleed. Um, let's just grab a few of these. And now, if we go back to our products table, what we'll see is that the cover and the interior will have been brought in here as well. So you'll get a preview of what the cover looks like and information from that cover uh, directly here in the products table using lookups and the same for the interiors as well. So uh, you can view your interior files directly here or you can download them uh, as a, a file from there if you wish like any normal attachment field in Airtable. Okay so that's products, covers and interiors. Next we'll have a look at authors and authors is simply the collection of all the authors that you've put into your products uh, that you've pushed up to this base and it's the same for contributors so we're just capturing the first name, middle name, last name, the type of contributor and uh, just like we do for authors and these will become useful later on when we want to reuse this information for, for new products that we're going to be adding. After that we've got keyword sets. Keyword sets are what we're terming when you put in the seven keyword text boxes and you can put in to those the uh, different keyword phrases. Again these will become useful later on as we look to reuse those. And that's about it for the base as far as products and your information that gets pushed into there. Uh, the other tables we'll cover later on or in another video. Uh, but yeah, you, all your information is encapsulated in these first six tables over here. Okay, so let's have a look at the other tables that are there in the base. So we've done up to prices. We've seen we can use those in the pricing page. The new products page is like the new listings page in Merch Wizard. So you would put your book information in here and uh, then you'd be able to locate it in the pop-up and locate and push that into the KDP content pages. We also have with the scalar table. So we click on scalar and you'll get the idea here where we can use simple formulas to scale out our listing data. So in variable one, we've got the states going down and then we've got the book type in here. So for example, if we change this to be a diary, we can see that that would update. I'm just going to update that and drag that down into the other rows as well. So we've got Alabama State Diary now and all the way through the description, uh, it's adding those. And these are simple or relatively simple formulas and you'll be able to 
maybe not immediately in the beta, but in uh, one of the later releases in the beta, you'll be able to use the scalar table as a data source. And you'll be able to search the scalar table like you can with new products, and you'll be able to uh, use that data to populate the controls in the KDP listing pages. Moving on from there, we have got the markets that are available for KDP. And we've got the information in here. These will be maintained by the app. So as the app upgrades, we'll add more records into here uh, as they become available. And then we've got trim sizes, which is a lookup. We have got the languages. Then we've got the system table, which stores information about the version of the base and things like that. Okay, so that is a uh, whistle stop tour of the base. And what I was just going to say is a couple of caveats, which are the base template will change. We're going to make it bigger and better and add more things to it. So um, don't put all your stuff in there immediately and think it's going to be upgradable going forward. It's one of those situations where um, it's going to be a case of when we come out of beta, we suggest everybody takes a fresh copy of the base and um, we'll support that going forward, but there won't be a upgrade path as such from beta um, base version one um, all the way through to the go live base.